Imagine you have the number 1 and it gets duplicated and it gets reincarnated into two of its same kind. So one gets duplicated into two watts. Okay. In the next step, think about it like this. Each of the members of this row gets duplicated again. So this becomes one and one and this also becomes one and one. Notice that these two ones will sort of collide with each other in the middle. So whenever you have a collision, we will add. So we will add these two ones and make it into a two. Notice that the value of each of the numbers is actually preserved in the sum. So now what we have is 1, 2, 1. We will use the same tool one more time. We will duplicate each of the pieces. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. Now whenever we have a collision, we again add. So in this way, we get the regular Pascal's triangle. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1 and so on. But there is an advantage of thinking of the Pascal's triangle in this manner. And what is that? Notice that the number, okay, so maybe I can change this into threes first. So three and three. Notice that the sum of the numbers in each row is a power of two. So the number in the first row adds up to one, second row adds up to two, third row adds up to four, fourth row adds up to eight and so on. In fact, it's doubling in each step. The question is, why do you think, what is the logic behind this doubling? Why do you think we should expect that to happen? There is a very easy way to imagine it using this construction. It's doubling because each number is getting duplicated. Each number in a particular row is doubly duplicated. And even when you have a collision, the value of this is remaining inside the sum. So, since each number of the previous row is doubling, you would expect the next line to have double the number of amount of value than the previous line. In fact, here is something of a food for thought. Instead of duplication, what if the numbers tripled? What if you started with 2 instead of 1? What kind of objects will you get if you do that? Think about both of these problems. This particular video is suitable for kids of 5th, 6th grade, maybe a little less, 3rd, 3rd, 4th grade. Try this imagination and duplication exercise at your home. If you are a parent, you can try this with your children. Check the link in the description for more resources like this. We will keep on adding more resources to the No Fear for Mathematics program.